Hello everyone. Welcome to all. This is Dr. Vigneshwar Mehta, Assistant Professor of Geography, Government Degree College for Women's Autonomous at and I welcome you all for this session. And here we shall discuss about the atmosphere, origin, composition, and structure. For your convenience, the session is divided into five major points, namely introduction, origin and evolution, composition, structure, and importance of the atmosphere. First, we will go with the introduction. Earth is a unique planet because the life is found only on the planet Earth. The air as a special place among the conditions necessary for the living organisms. The air is a mixture of several gases air comprises encompasses the earth from all sides. The array surrounding the earth is called the atmosphere. The atmosphere is an integral part of, of earth. The atmosphere is connected with the earth due to the gravitational force of the earth. It helps in stopping the ultraviolet rays harmful for the life and maintain the suitable temperature necessary for the living organisms. Now, we will look into the definition of atmosphere. What is atmosphere? The Earth is an exclusive planet among eight planets of our solar system because, and this is the only planet which comprises life on it, as we discussed in the book. Okay? The necessary conditions required for the life on the earth includes air, water, and land. Here, air occupies a special place among these. The air is an assortment of the various gases. The entire planet earth is enveloped by a deep blanket of gases extending several thousands of kilometers above the surface of the earth. And this gaseous cover of the earth is called the atmosphere. The atmosphere became an integral part of our earth. It is made up of several gases, water vapor, and minute particles suspended in the gaseous substances of air. Without this atmosphere, we cannot survive. All our daily activities are confined with it, like land, water. The atmosphere is also an integral part of the earth and it is held in place by the gravitational influence of the earth. Now let us focus on the atmosphere as an integral part of the earth crust. So the earth scientists the crust includes not only the top layer of solid material but also the hydrosphere and the atmosphere. Interactions among these solid, liquid and gaseous portions of the crust are so frequent and through that considering them separately introduces more compl uh, complexities than it eliminates. Presently, a description of the history of the atmosphere must concern itself with all volatile components of the Earth's crust. The material that as a part of the Earth's crust, 
Herz Atmosphäre. The volatile compounds as well as elements in present and past atmospheres are interactions between the atmosphere, biosphere, and other portions of the crust include the following. The present major components, abundant variable components, and other components. Present major components include molecular nitrogen and molecular oxygen. Abundant variables compounds are noble gases, helium, neon, argon, krypton, and xenon. Abundant variable components include water vapor, carbon dioxide, and other components include molecular hydrogen, methane, carbon monoxide, ammonia, nitrous oxide, nitrogen dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, dimethyl sulfide, sulfur dioxide, and hydrogen chloride. Now, we focus on the origin and evolution of the Earth's atmosphere. The, the <coughs> In the 4.6 billion years of the Earth's history, the composition of the atmosphere has changed from a hazy, unfamiliar mix to today's mostly blue skies. As the atmosphere developed, life began and evolved. The evolution of living things changed the atmosphere and those changes in turn altered life. As far as we know, the relationship is unique to our planet. The first atmosphere consisted of gases in the solar nebula, primarily hydrogen. For your convenience, the origin and evolution of atmosphere is divided into four headings, which are one, adionion, two, orkinion, three, proterozoic ion, and four, phanerozoic ion. And first, we will look into the Hydrogen ion. And this is the primary, primordial atmosphere, and which was confined to 4,540 to 4,000 million years ago. The Earth's original atmosphere was probably just hydrogen and helium because these were the main gases in the sky that the dusty gassy disk around the sun from the which the planets formed. The earth and its atmosphere were very hot. Molecules of hydrogen and helium move really fast, especially when warm. Actually, they moved so fast, they eventually all escaped Earth's gravity and drifted off into the space. Over time, the Earth's surface solidified, leaving behind our volatiles which resulted in a heavy carbon dioxide atmosphere with hydrogen, nitrogen, and inert gases and water vapor. 
After the formation of the oceans, dissolving in ocean water removed most carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Some carbon dioxide reacted with the metals to form carbonates that were deposited as sediments. The early atmosphere contained almost no oxygen. Most of the lighter gases like the hydrogen and helium escaped into the space and are continually escaping even to the present day due to the atmospheric escape, that is, outer layers stripped by solar wind. The second stage or the second one is the Orkin Eon and which existed between 4,000 and 12,500 million years ago. And this atmosphere was without oxygen and atmospheric pressure was around 10 to 100 atmospheres. Nitrogen formed the major part of the then stable second atmosphere. Earth's second atmosphere come from Earth itself. There were lots of the volcanic, lots of the volcanoes, many more than today, because Earth's crust was still forming. The eruption of the volcanoes released The following three components such as steam, carbon dioxide and ammonia. The steam includes of H2O with the hydrogen atoms and two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Carbon dioxide with one carbon atoms and two oxygens. Ammonia NH3 with one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms. The outgassing on the solid planet, the release of the gases during volcanic eruption is one example of the outgassing. Release at submarine hydrothermal vents or another. Although the gas in modern volcanic Emanations commonly derived from rocks that have picked up volatiles at Earth's surface and then have been buried to depths at which high temperature re remobilize the volatile materials. A very different situation must have prevailed at the earliest stages of the Earth's history. The volcanic outgassing has created the primordial atmosphere. The outgassing of volcanism supplemented by the gases produced during the late heavy bombardment of the earth produced the next atmosphere. Most of the nitrogen in the air was carried out from deep inside the earth by the volcanoes. In the late, the Orkin year, an oxygen containing atmosphere began to develop, apparently produced by the photosynthesis cyanobacteria. The constant rearrangement of the continents influenced the long term evaluation of the atmosphere by transforming carbon dioxide to and from large continental carbonate stores. The third one is the Proterozoic Eon, which was confined to 2,500 million years to 541 million years, around 550 million years. This is the period of oxygen in atmosphere or the boom of the oxygen in atmosphere. Free oxygen 
did not exist in the atmosphere until about the 2.4 billion years ago. Oxygen showed major variations until reaching a steady state of more than 15 percentage by the end of the Proterozoic. Between 700 to 550 million years ago in the later Proterozoic, oxygen levels in the oceans and atmosphere increase dramatically by 600 million years ago the oxygen in the atmosphere reached about one-fifth of the today's level the oxygen boom powered the evolution of life forms that could use oxygen to create energy for other organisms oxygen was poisonous and they were forced into extreme airless habitats or into the extinction. Some scientists say that the increase in oxygen helped fuel the burst of sea life known as the, the Cambrian explosion 532 500, 9 million years ago, including the evolution of the Eripterors and trilobites. The next is the Panerozoic Eon. And this is 541 million years to the present day. And this is considered as the present atmosphere of the modern atmosphere. The amount of oxygen in the atmosphere reached a peak of about 30 percent around 300 million years ago. The two main processes govern changes in the oxygen levels in the atmosphere. Yeah, one. Plants use carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and releasing the oxygen. The second is breakdown of the pyrite, the iron sulfide, and volcanic eruptions release sulfur into the atmosphere, which oxidizes and hence reduces the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. However, the volcanic eruptions also release carbon dioxide, which plants can convert oxygen. Periods with much oxygen in the atmosphere are associated with the rapid development of animals on the earth. Today's atmosphere comprises of the 21 percentage of oxygen and 78 percentage of the nitrogen, which is great enough for the rapid development of animals and uh, the plant growth respectively. The Phanerozoic Eon is divided into three eras, the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. They span from about 540 million years ago to the present. We live now in the Cenozoic era. As climate changed numerous times during the Phanerozoic Eon, at the end of the pre-Cambrian, much of the planet was covered with the glaciers. At the start of the Phanerozoic Eon, the climate became warm and humid, 
since then the earth's climate has gone through four cycles of frigid glacials and warm tropical seas some organisms survive changes in the climate others go extinct when the climate changes too much the phanerozoic zoic as span from 540 million years they go to the present day and uh, the phanerozoic eon is made up of the paleozoic mesozoic and cenozoic eras the quantity and the diversity of the life has exploded since the beginning of the phanerozoic eon so far we dealt with the following points introduction to atmosphere definitions of the atmosphere atmosphere as an integral part of the earth crust origin and evolution of the atmosphere in the next session we will focus on the composition of the atmosphere thank you very much thank you